Mmm, that's spicy juice. It actually has a little bit of chili in there. I love it. This is like a, it's a Virgin Mary. A Virgin Bloody Mary? A Virgin Mary. I don't know. Okay, so you just bought yourself an Insta360. You've watched my videos and you're like, hells yeah, this thing's actually cool. Come from your ride, you got your footage. Now what the hell do you do? You can edit in your iPhone app, but that doesn't export it in high res. You want high res 4K quality. The only way to do that is by using the Insta360 Studio. Now it can feel overwhelming. When I first opened it up, I was just like, hmm, all the keyframing and moving it all around. Like what the hell? What the hell? It just doesn't make sense. Blocking out a section of time is something that I do when I'd like to learn something new. And I just have a dedicated hour, one hour. As soon as that timer runs out, I stop. I don't go any further. This encourages you to want to come back to it the next day. If you end it on a bit of a lull, you've been editing for like three hours, you hate what you're seeing, you're just going to walk away and you'll never come back to it again. In this video, we're going to be looking at the 360 Studio app and then also what to do with your footage after the app. Now, there are some limitations with the Studio app, just like not being able to grade or not being able to add music to it or to cut it up and make a little cool clip out of it. You can't really do that in the app. That's where Video Proc comes in. It's a free editing software app and they sponsored this week's video, which I'm really stoked about. It's free though. You don't have to pay 500 bucks for Final Cut Pro. You don't have to pay a $30 subscription a month for Premiere Pro. You can just download this thing and jump straight in. It's very intuitive as well. So if you just like to add some music, maybe add a couple of transitions, put some text in if you really want to, export it, boom, and then you've got some, you've got, you've got a little decent video. It's pretty sick, it's really sick. But first we need to get our 360 footage sorted. Insta360 Studio 2022. Okay, so once you open it up, this is, this is the screen. We're here. I'm just gonna go full screen so it looks mad. You're gonna hit open it on this import 360 files here. Boom, you open that bad boy you find the files that you've just imported. So I usually just stick my SD card in my memory card reader and just drag and drop the files onto my hard drive and then here they all are. Okay, so I'm just gonna walk you through all the buttons here and what they do and what you, know, what you can sort of expect to see. When you import, it's gonna be like a list for you like this. These are all your files all here and you can see next to them. So I've recorded these on the new RS, the Insta360 RS. So we've got the 4K footage, and then we've got the 5.7K, and this is your 360 footage. There's me. Looking like an absolute lord. So how good is this? This is when we just ripped around the, the Grand Prix track. The new Grand Prix, like this, this year's one, the one that's happening in two weeks. This is Albert Park, ladies and gents. So we're gonna just edit the footage from this little rip that we did with a couple of lotuses. Okay, so you have this list for you here. You can click in this one here and it shows thumbnail as well as a bit of, you know, a bit of detail, or you can go to this here, which I recommend. So you can just like sort of scrub through the footage and see what you've got here. Here you got your camera files thing. I don't, I think that's, you can stick your SD card in and read off that, I don't know. I don't use it. Favorites, I don't use it. Um, and then you upload stuff. I'll show you that later. You got this little plus button here. You can hit that if you want to add in more files to your list. On this right section over here, we have this little button. Got flow state stabilization. I always leave that checked. Otherwise, it's just going to be all wobbly and a bit weird. You can already see it just jittery. Turn that on. Boom. And it's smooth as. It's so smooth. Just leave it on. Leave it on. Leave it on. Direction lock, I also leave on. Let me show you an example of direction lock. Okay, this is direction lock off. So when you go around a corner, it's just going to keep pointing straight. I don't want that. I don't want that at all. Now we turn direction lock on and it's literally just gonna follow it as if we were just doing POV. So direction lock, those two I leave on all the time. And then you've got the stitching stuff, don't really use it, I just leave it on normal. And then you've got image processing, color plus, nah. And Aquavision, if you're doing underwater footage, you hit that and it changes the tint because of the water being all green and stuff, so it adds a bit more magenta in there. Audio stuff, I don't really worry about, and like I don't worry about anything else. Like, that's it. It's literally just this, and just leave them to engaged. This up here, 360 degree view, I don't use. And also guys, if, if you are pretty well versed in Insta360 Studio, you know, if you've got anything to add, please drop them in the comment section below. I'd love to learn more, if you know what I mean. We can make this tutorial a good old fashioned group tutorial. Okay, so now moving down to this section here, you have the 16 by nine, so then you can choose all your aspect ratios. If you wanna go full cinematic vibes, or if you wanna go nine by 16 for your iPhone, um, that's like the beauty of Insta360 stuff. Where do you go? There he is. But for this, we're gonna go 16 by nine. You can just take a snapshot, boom, 
And now that's just taken a photo of that. You just export it to wherever you want to. Full screen mode, goes into full screen. And now we've got these little bad boys, which we shall now work through. So this is your, this is your little playhead here. And this is your timeline here. So you can go play like this. You can use your directional arrows on your keyboard to go frame by frame. You can hold down shift to skip 10 frames at a time. Boom, 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 boom. And you can turn the volume up or down. We're just gonna turn it down. So we have our playhead. So I sort of, I want the footage. I want us to start rolling at about here. So you can hit this little button here and that's gonna trim the whole front section off it. Or you can just grab it and go, you know, start there or whatever. I just find it easier to scrub to where you want it to sort of start and then you just go boom and now we're there. I guess this is the most confusing part. Even for me when I started, I was like, this is hella confusing. I don't know what the hell is going on, but I've learned to just use, you know, you just use keyframes all the time. So let's say we want to start here. We're happy with this position. Hit the keyframe button. Boom. Now this little window here pops up and we can sort of adjust how we want everything to look. We can zoom in, you can see all the numbers changing, we can zoom right out. I like to keep everything sort of, you know, you got that default button there, that's how it was when we started. I mean like, yeah, you can hit the crystal ball, you can hit the tiny planet thing, and then you can go natural view. I usually only use default and natural view. I don't really, you know, I don't really care about this stuff. That's just me. So now we have it here. Okay, so now that we're there, it's locked there. The keyframe has said, we want it here all the time. And now we can start moving along. We're pulling out and we're going. This is sick, we're cruising down the straight. This is pit straight. And now, okay, so about here, we're good. So we wanna hit the keyframe button again because we want it to stay there. And now from say here, from that keyframe spot, we're just gonna move forward a little bit and we're going to spin the camera around because now we want to show the cars, two cars, two lotuses, and that's me all the way down there. So we're here and then we're going to go hit the keyframe button again. Now we've told it that we want it to be looking at this direction at this point. So now if we go back, and by the way, you can just sort of, use a little magnifying glass, you can zoom in. You can see, what, you can see what's going on in a little more detail. See that? Boom. So we're cruising. And then, boop. How cool is that? The mistakes I used to make was I used to then be like, all right, and now I want it to go over here and, and then I'd hit it again. But what that's telling it to do is when we're here, it's going to slowly end up going over to this direction. So we wanted to stay on the car for a little bit longer. So again, you hit the keyframe first, boom. Now that's gonna be staying on the car for that long. And then when you move, we go here, we hit keyframe. Bring the playhead back, looking at the car, looking at the car, and then it turns. And that's what we want. Now, if you make a mistake, or if you wanna adjust the keyframe points, like let's just say we didn't want it to happen that soon or whatever, Instead of deleting them all and then re-keyframing, you can just click on the keyframe point and then just drag it. Whoop. So then that's gonna turn really slowly. Or you want it to be faster? Bring it like here. Zah. <laughs> so that's pretty much the basics of keyframing. And you mean you can you can do everything. So like here, all right, let's zoom, we wanna zoom right up. We wanna make it natural view and zoom the hell in. Now the more you zoom in, the less detail you have. Just be mindful of that. So then we go vong and it's going to zoom in as well as turn. And then you can put another one in, drag it along, have another one here and then zoom right out like that. And now the turning, you know, it looks pretty static, it looks pretty boring. So I'm gonna talk you through how you can change the feeling of how it moves, how the pan actually happens. So you can go ahead and click on the little bar inside here and then you have these little guys. And now we'll have a look at some examples. So that's your stock standard one. Boom, it sucks. It looks a bit boring. The slip in fade out. So it's gonna go fast and then slow down. And then you got the opposite. Got the fade out, slip in. Slow, then fast, but then it locks. I don't like that static lock. Um, I, just, I just don't. Then you got the slip in and slip out. Fast, slow, and then fast. And then this is the one I like using. I, f I just like things happening slowly, then fast and slow. It's just like a nice, I think it's like, it's got a professional sort of look to it. Yeah, so it's just like, 
Ooh. And you can apply that to literally any part. So when we're going to the to this, you can do it. Boom. I pretty much use this one all the time on all my on the, all the transitions. Ooh. It's smooth. It's nice. Fade in, fade out. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that looks heaps better. So that's sort of keyframing. That's keyframing in a nutshell. And you can, there's so many options. You just click and drag and you can, you can literally like do anything. Hey, you can look at this guy and zoom into that. Um, like the options are like ridiculous. Don't overwhelm yourself. Just keep it simple. Keep it very simple. Instead of going through the entire thing and then exporting it as one whole clip. Because like from here to say like here, you might not want anything. You don't want all that. And you know, you don't want to sit here waiting for it to export and all that sort of stuff. And so we're stoked with it ending here. You can just hit this button here. It says mark as trim end. Boom. And now we've just got this little part to work with. So you're gonna hit this little export button. Boom. You might not have this. It might be down to like somewhere around here. And I think this is like at 1080 or something like that. So go ahead and input these numbers here. So this is your 4K resolution and crank up the, the bit rate. This is gonna retain as much quality as possible. If it's a bit darker, use the remove grain. I will here because we've got some grain in the, in the image. You can save this preset so that you don't have to keep punching this in every time. So go ahead and save it. I've just named this one 4K. And then you can just go add to queue. Boom. And now that's there, ready to go. And so then we can continue on. Drag your playhead out. So we've done the keyframing thing. We're gonna start at this point here. I'm gonna show you how the deep track works. It's very easy. You click on the deep track, click and drag over the subject that you wanna track, and then literally just hit start tracking. Now this is probably the most easiest way to just track a subject, um, but it also leaves you the less control. So you can't keyframe, you can't choose how far you wanna zoom in, zoom out. You can't choose any of that sort of stuff, but it does this track. And if that's what you want to do, then happy days, you're doing it. And it tracks really well. It actually works very, very well. And that's when the Insta360 fell on the road. Ooh, it was so lucky. This was the RS as well when I was doing the, the damn review. And it again, it just fell on the side and um, it didn't mark any of the lenses, didn't damage a car, thank goodness. So we can just go back there and now this is how it looks. Done, we're tracked, happy days. That's tracking. Boom, do the same thing, hit the export. We've already got it set up, add to queue, bang, done. Now I'm just gonna find the next file here. So this one, I followed the, the cars behind them really nice and nice and closely because I knew I wanted to do this. I've already got it all dialed in here. That's another cool thing, it remembers everything that you do. So you can come back, like this was all closed. And this is the edit that I did for the RS review, but it kept everything, all the keyframes and everything here. So you can go back if you want, and because this is all nine by 16, uh, 16 by nine, sorry, we can then go back in and change it now. If I want it for iPhones, I could put it on a story and oh, that's all I have to do. And then just re-export it and I've got it for my phone. It's bloody genius. Now the quality is probably going a bit lower here because the sun's going down, but oh well. Trim that off. This is where we're gonna start. Now we're using the time shift function. This is pretty cool as well. Just, I'm not even clicking. You can just choose how long you want the time shift to be happening. So we say about, yeah, about there, that looks good. And then we can choose the speed rate by just clicking and dragging this. 60 volts too much, 32 is a bit too much. 16 I find is a pretty sweet spot. Cruising, cruising, and then boom, away we go. And that speeds it up like that. Now, it doesn't look that great here, it's pretty static, whatever. But when you export it, we're having this checked, it actually puts a really cool motion blur effect to it. It looks awesome, it actually does it really well. Hit add to queue, and that's added in the queue as well. And it's all here. For me, that's it. That's the studio, like away you go. All you have to do now is hit this little button here, export all, and that's just gonna export all your clips and you can literally have, you know, a hundred all lined up all the way down here. Hit export all at once and then go and make yourself some lunch, have a coffee, come back and they're all gonna be exported. So while I was waiting for the exports to happen, I just jumped on YouTube. Hey, that's done. Someone commented, heard about you from Chase on Two Wheels and dig on the channel. So Chase, did Chase mention me somewhere? I don't know. I was, I've been literally just trying to find where he's mentioned me. I just, I couldn't find it. I watched his last vid. I, I don't know where. I'm actually, I'm so intrigued, but you know, hey Chase, if you're watching this, g'day mate. Um, thanks for mentioning me. That's so sick. I love your channel. I love your stuff. That's so cool. I love that. That's, that's awesome. That's so sick. Um, okay. So now the footage has been exported. Just so you know, I just did this very fast. This is not the way, you know, this is not the final end product. I spend time finding the angles I want to get. It takes time and practice. Just be patient with it and you'll get a nice little edit thing going on. But now you see that you have multiple clips and you can't really do anything with that. It's just literally, you know, we've just got this. 
This is where Video Proc comes in very, very handy. So you guys have already installed this. Now you can go in here, you can choose what resolution and everything you want. It's already, we're good to go. This is 4K. You can choose all these different res resolutions for iPhone, for iPad, for all this stuff. Really clever. Um, all your different frame rates, gonna hit that. Um, or you can go custom, but this is good for us. New project, boom. Okay, let's just take the clips that we just did. We're gonna import them. And so now you've got these little sections here. You got video, you got picture, you got music, and you got subtitle as well. So we got your three videos here. Let's just go in and add some music to it as well. Might use that song, it's pretty hip. Um, I'm gonna select that. It imports it and it puts it straight into the music section, like without even having to, you know, do anything. It's really, really cool. Now I'm gonna highlight these three. I'm gonna click and drag them into the timeline, boom. And so the same things here, video, you got photo, you got effects and stuff, audio, subtitle. It's awesome, it's very clever. What you might wanna do is just zoom in on that so we can have a nice look at what we're working with here. It looks mad. Boo, like how cool is that? That's full on, I'm racing right now. I'm playing Xbox and I'm racing. <laughs> okay, that looks so sick. It's a cool effect. Okay, so we're just gonna kill the audio because we don't want the audio, boom. And I mean like if you recorded the audio with a mic so you're not getting any window noise or anything, you can import it into here, it'll come into the music thing, drag that like we will with the music and then boom, and you can sync it all up and everything. I have another video on syncing if you wanna check it out. Boom, you have music to your track. Isn't that sick? Again, it's, it's sort of like the Insta360 Studio where you can zoom in, zoom out, you can move the track where you want it to, you can grab these little things and zoom, like bring them in to shorten the clip or anything like that. So that's already just the super, super simple basics to using video proc. Put music to it, happy damn days. So we've got a media library, library here. This is where your stuff is. Then you can go to transitions and they have a whole bunch of transitions. So all you have to do here to add a transition, just say, which one should we do? We do the glitch one, I like glitchy stuff. Click and drag that over to the, the section where the two videos meet and a transition's been made. Happy days. And then you can even drag that out and it's gonna make it a longer transition. Space to play, space to pause. Big old slow digital transition. You get the picture. And if you wanna get rid of it, just click on it, delete it, boom, it's gone. If you wanna add titles, same vibe. There it all is. Click and drag, puts it in the title section, subtitle. So there's your title to change the text. You just go here. What do you wanna write? G'day mate. Boom, there, choose all your, you know, all your stuff. It's such a cool little app. This is like the ultimate, like for entering video editing, this is perfect. I wish I had this when I was going into Premiere Pro because I was using an older version as well and it was so clunky and it crash heaps and it was just horrible. Like there's no rendering time with this. It's just, it's just work, it, it works so smoothly. I can't, it's very, very, very good. And then you got effects here. I haven't even looked at the effects part yet. Digital grid. Mad. What? Click and drag. Press play. Let's see what this does. You got a digital grid that you can play around with. There's also all these little cool effects here that you can apply to your video. One of them being the speed. So here you've got a whole bunch of different presets that you can use to speed ramp your video. Speed ramping is when you might have a video that's just going slowly, just boom, and then you want to go wah, and then slow back down again, like real fast and slow. Speeds it up, then slows it down. Speed ramp. And then you have all these sort of different ones as well where you can go slow, fast, or a slow ramp up, and then a slow come down. Um, or you can just create your own. Again, it may look a little bit gnarly, but it's it's very it's so much easier than Final Cut and Premiere. I can't believe how much easier it is. It's still it is still it's still a learning curve. It still it still takes a little bit of time. It's pretty disjointed. Like when I just play this, and all of a sudden it just goes, boo, and it's just fast. Where I want a slow ramp speed into that. So it goes fast. Right there, um, I wanted to ramp speed about back here. So it's like we're going into that turbo boost mode. Now you have the amount that you want to speed it up by here. So we're going to speed it up by a damn lot. Boop. We're going to go four times. And we're just going to hold that here. Do it. And then we're going to bring this one forward. And we're going to slow it down again because we're already going damn hyperspeed. <laughs> we don't need to get more hyperspeed. And then so then basically, let's play that back. Boom. Yeah, so it speeds up. It's just like a slow, ooh, it's ramping and ramping, and then it goes faster and faster. We might even make this one go a bit higher. Like that. Boom. Like that. That's what I'm talking about. 
you can click on the motion one. So then this, you know, you can put in your crop bars, add vertical bars. So then here, <laughs> so I want the, when the bars drop all the way down, the point that that drops down, that's when I want it to go turbo mode. Boom, so that's right there. So we drag it back, zoom, boom. And we're in, I might even drag that back. So it's a bit of a very dramatic doosh. And we're in, okay, how good's that? Cool, apply that. I like it, I like it a lot. And then when it comes to color grading the clip, you click on the clip, you hit color, and now you've got all these different grades that are already in the in the footage as well. Now the, the trick behind grading is not to have it too intense. So I always like to start zero and then just slowly bring it up. You don't want too much. You just want like a little bit, a little bit of, a mm, little bit of goodness. Or if you got your own presets, if you bought a pack of lights or anything, this is my light here. Um, you can import them as well and they, they work perfectly. If you buy any light, you can just boom straight in here. There we go. And we are just going to add a bit of contrast to bring it down a little bit, get rid of that gray stuff. I'm going to shorten the music track back down to here. We're going to get rid of that. Boom. We're going to go export. And then you can choose your quality. Let's go high quality. Start. We have exported El Video. And there, there it is on my desktop. Now that's actually a decent video. You have a video there, you can now do whatever you want with it. Now guys, this was just an example of what you can do. Obviously, I'd, I'd spend so much more time doing all this sort of stuff. You need to allow yourself time. It's not gonna be just super easy. It takes time, it takes practice. It is daunting at first, absolutely. It's so, it's so daunting, especially if you've just never done any of this stuff before. But these two apps combined, Studio 360 and VideoProc, uh, that's, that's, that's an unstoppable beast. It's an unstoppable machine. Thanks so much for watching this vid, guys. I hope you, you got something from this. I hope you go out and try to use the Insta360 Studio app and you have a bit more of an understanding on how to use it. If you have any knowledge that you'd like to share, please drop them in the comments below. If you'd like any questions about anything that I've spoken about today, please drop them in the comments below as well, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Other than that, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. I've got this one guy on YouTube right now that, and you guys know, I don't watch a lot of motorcycle content. I watch this guy's content all the time. His name is Moto Feels. He has his game set up like, Video quality is fantastic. You guys will not be upset by watching this guy's videos.